Hey, gents, Scheme Rhythm here for part two of Let's Play Dark Souls. So, Lord Ren. This is the... Think of this... This place is called Fire Lake Shrine. Think of it as the central hub of the game. You're going to be coming here a lot. Get over it. So, first things first, the rest of this bonfire refills your Estus Flask. Now, you notice... You might notice at the bottom that I have ten Estus Flasks. This bonfire comes kindled. Kindled bonfires are going to give you more Estus, basically. Um, you have to, in order to kindle a bonfire, you have to reverse howling, which you offer humanity. You know what? This is going to get really complicated if I try to explain now. So, while you're here, you level up at bonfires in Lord Ryan. You can't do that in the tutorial. So what I would suggest doing, actually, is a couple points of vitality to begin with, and after that, start raising strength up to 16. So, there are several things you can do with your character in Dark Souls. Um, I'm going to have a dexterity heavy build probably for this one, this particular character, because it's a thief, he starts with 15 dexterity, which is pretty high. So, yeah. So, let's start by uh, talking to this NPC here. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess, fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first, but there's no celebration here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below in the ruins of the base of Blight Tower. So, if you're curious, actually, the all the dialogue was originally recorded, even in the Japanese version, in English. So, these vocals are all the original vocals that were recorded. Talked to him a few times. I think that was actually a hint to a part later in the game where you have to be, where you have to have died at one point to continue. Mm, but restoring your humanity when you have received your physical body, collect the sweet fungus from the corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the oldest way for your eyes there to do it is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity, coveting the labor is only human Okay, humanity. If you look up in the top left, you'll see a zero, zero. That's my humanity count. When humanity gets higher, all sorts of neat things happen. You can reverse your howling and become human, so your character actually looks like what you chose at the beginning. Um, actually, there's some humanity on this corpse here. Um, you can actually use it to kindle bonfires once you become human so that they give you more Estus. It, right now it's capped at 10, but you get something later that lets you cap it at 20. Um, Whenever you have higher humanity, it actually increases enemy drop rates. I think it stops at 30, but it's 30 humanity, that is. But in general, humanity is nice to have. And save your humanity items. I can't stress this enough because there's going to be one part later in the game where if you want to do the best possible path, you're going to want to have at least 30 humanity saved up. So I can't stress it enough. Hold on to your humanity. So the next NPC we're going to meet is up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Farallon. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Okay, asshole. What does this say? Okay. It's funny, because when I first got the game, they said there were a bunch of soapstone messages down here that said, Fatty ahead. I couldn't help but laugh at those. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance, but I also want you to know 
that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Oh, I thank you. Wait, copper coin. Remember how I mentioned that the uh, currency of Dark Souls was souls? Yeah, that's a problem. Oh my, you again. Oh, are you? How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Mm, sure, why not? If you want to learn miracles, say yes. Very well. And first, a covenant with the gods. So to learn miracles from him, you have to join his covenant first. You don't have to stay in his covenant to keep learning miracles, but, you know. That copper coin messages. Okay, there we go. Now, let me share my miracles. Only, their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. So, you can purchase miracles from them. Um, miracles are the only way to heal whenever you are actually not in a, um, whenever you're in another person's world, when, as a phantom, either an invading phantom or as a summon phantom, you can't heal with your Estus Flask. You have to use a heal, um, miracle to heal. And, um, sorcery has catalyst, pyromancy has the glove, and miracles have the talisman whenever you're casting. So I can talk to My them more. to keep her from harm. Learn gesture. You can learn gestures from random NPCs in the game. It doesn't impact that much, but you know. An undead mission? Regrettably, I cannot share that with you. But you are my pupil. Perhaps if you show your faith. Okay, so you're going to want to go and get 600 souls. There are some enemies nearby, thankfully. Um, I think I'll just fast forward and show me going and killing a couple of enemies until I get 600 souls. So, yeah, I'll be right back with commentating. Damn it. Okay, to sum it up, what he says, if you offer him the 600 souls, is he tells you about kindling. Clerics seek the right of kindling so that they can offer humanity to bonfires, and those who get the right of kindling apparently get great power down the road. That sums it up. I'm so sorry. The effectiveness of the teachings. So if you want to hear him say that, you have to press yes there. Oh well, I guess there's no harm done in getting the free 600 souls. So actually, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and rest. Hey guys, sorry about the obvious cut there. Um, I'm just trying to make sure the video stays in sync here. Don't have quite enough to level up, but um, so I'm going to discuss dying as a game mechanic. Whenever you die, you drop all the humanity in the, that you've collected in the top left corner and souls that you've collected in that spot where you died, more or less. And you go back to the bonfire. So this game reward... So you have to fight your way back and reclaim your souls if you want to get it back. So in a way, this game actually rewards you for progressing and doing slightly better than last time, if, in, if nothing else. Which is actually, I think, a really cool mechanic. So, yeah, this... Now, they say the tagline of this game is prepare to die. Well, that is the tagline of the game, but you get the point. Okay, he just died, I think. Enemies can knock themselves off cliffs. It, it can happen. So, there are actually 
there's actually one point in the game where you are required to die, but, I mean, aside from that, there's not really, oh, look at that, he's still alive. Oh, well. So, I recommend using this area to get used to parrying. Don't get too close to the edge, because that guy, when he's up there, will actually spam those firebombs at you. These are just regular firebombs he's throwing at you, not the black firebombs. Okay. I'll tell you that if you're a pyromancer, your fire your fire spells are actually really strong against the enemies here. Uh, in fact, through this whole first area. All the enemies in this first area are just classic undead characters. And before I progress to the first main area, um, I'm going to come over here. What you do is you run and you jump. To run and jump, you hold the B button down to dash, release it, and quickly press it again. This will let your character jump, and there's a ring of sacrifice over here. Basically, this that ring makes it so that when you die, you don't lose any of your souls or humanity. And then you do the same thing to get back. So, um, one thing I will mention is some people like to go to the graveyard, which is the other way from where I'm going. Right now, I went to the right. If you go to the left, you actually get to go to the graveyard, which there are some items in there that you can make some suicide runs to get, and there are some strong enemies in there that are gonna would be very hard to beat at this level. Um, I'm actually not going to go for those items because most of what you get in there isn't that important. Come in here, turn left, and kill the rat, and wow, this corpse disappeared. That's weird. Um, you get humanity there. You go through the sewer area. I guess it's an aqueduct or something, I, I guess. And then, you walk up. And guess where we are? Be wary of Hollow. This is Undead Burg, the first main area of the game. Barely avoid getting hit there. So, enemies start off, you know, really simple. They have slow attacks, for the most part. They have weapons like the battle axe and the short sword. Um, there's a secret area here. Go through it. Pick up Lord Soul of the Lost Undead. Lord Soul of the Lost Undead and Lost Soul of Un and Soul of the Lost Undead. Do not use those weapons yet. Those items yet. Um, later in the game, you can a there's actually someone you can sell stuff to, and they're actually worth more souls to sell them than they are from just using them. Kill these guys. They drop broken straight swords. I will say, don't get rid of the broken straight sword you started with at the beginning of the game. Because there is an item you can get later that involves using that weapon. Um, I guess it's of arguable usefulness. Some people who uh, own the game and have played it for a while know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here, these guys. They're waiting to ambush you. What you do is you just kick them. If you can. Oh god, I couldn't. You kick them and they fall off. These guys have that annoying attack. Rubbish. Save that for later as well. You can trade that to some to something later in the game. I will say I never played the original Demon Souls, which this game is a sequel to, basically. Um, I don't know. I just don't own a PS3. I guess that's a big part of it. But what can you do, huh? So, I'm going to progress. Oh, what's that? Looks like one of them just killed itself. Uh... Sometimes that happens. Enemies will kill themselves, and you'll get the souls from it. If any creature dies, you get the souls from it. Ooh, look at this guy. Ah, uh, plunge attack missed. You'll notice I take a little bit of damage whenever I'm getting hit when I have my shield up. That's because this shield... Hang on. The shield doesn't have good physical damage reduction. Um, the higher the percent, the more it protects you from certain types of attacks. Uh, most shields you're going to want to use have 100% damage reduction for physical attacks. But I'm using a small shield, and very few of those have that. But the advantage to a small shield is very it's a lot easier to time their parry than it is for a larger shield. We're getting actually really close to the next bonfire, so I'm going to go ahead and take a drink of that. So if you come back here, there's a soul there. Um, the main way to break stuff is to roll into it. That, that'll come into play a little later, but not now. 
there's nothing in there right now that is worth getting. Now here it looks like you could jump across, but you would be just short. Um, you'll be able to go through that in a few minutes. Holy shit, what is that? Oh god, I hope we don't see that guy again. Alright, come up here. There are some enemies here. There's an archer up above. Be careful of him. Normally I would suggest running straight through these guys and going straight to the archer, actually. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Because if you get to the archer first, there's not shit they can do about it. I haven't really talked much about the advantages and disadvantages of daggers, have I? Well, the thing about the dagger is it's not a very strong weapon compared to some of the other weapons that characters use. But it's a very fast weapon. And you get, if you watch, there's a very your recovery time from the attack is very, very low. Alright, light the bonfire. And I will rest here. And I think that's good enough for the one video. So guys, I will see you next time on Let's Play Dark Souls, and we will progress further into the Undead Burg. But first... Well, that was stupid. First, I will go ahead and... Actually, I think I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to save this level up. Save these souls. Not because it's a funny number, although that is awesome, too. So I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Dark Souls.